What up, y'all? Rap Critic here. And, well, it's about that time to talk about Drake again. That's right, the certified lover boy himself is back, with the smorgasbord of fresh off the assembly line tracks in the form of an album designed to clog up the streaming charts until they see which one has enough meme potential to last as a bankable single. And from the sample they used on this single, it was pretty clear which one it was going to be. Oh yes, folks, the Champagne Bobby has decided to embrace the meme and go full self-parody, with the Sex Jam sampling the most infamously campy 90s song of all time. I'm not even gonna bother with the sample reveal like I normally do, y you know what the hell this is. And as inherently silly as it sounds on his face, y you know, honestly, I'm not against the idea on paper. In fact, I gotta say, I like how the track starts, what with the melodramatically sexy vocal fry that sounds like someone's oh-so-seductively unbuttoning their shirt. Like, hey, if you're gonna sample a song like this, if you commit to the bit, you can totally pull it off. Unfortunately, things fall apart as soon as the rappers come in. Yeah, sadly, Mr. Too Sexy to Enunciate over here gets to do the chorus, and off the rip flattens out the charm of the sample. With a run-on hook that's so meandering and lifeless, it just stops the momentum of the track before it even really starts. Too sexy for this world, too sexy for this life, too sexy for that jack, yeah, yeah. Too sexy for this world, too sexy for this ice, for this cash, too sexy for this, too sexy for this ice, too sexy for that jack, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no, I was awake, I was just, um, no, I was, I was, I was sleeping like a mother. Too sexy for your girl, too sexy, too sexy for, for this cash, too sexy for this surf, too sexy for this, I get cash, wherever I fly, got bitches sex, on the jury, make a bill of sex, I get cash, wherever I fly, got bitches sex, I, too sexy for this surf, too sexy for your girl. Oh, no, I'm up, uh, is the hook still happening, right? Or, or, are we in the verse now, or? Oh my god, I, I legit can't tell. You know that feeling you get when you come home tired from school or work and you fall asleep so early when you wake up, you're not sure if you skipped a day or if the same day is still happening? Yeah, that's how it feels with this future hook. Like, which part is which, it just eventually blends into a general wash of vaguely comprehensible digital sludge. And I've heard people describe this song as like the male response to Cardi and Megan's WAP from last year, but that doesn't gel for me, because it doesn't nearly match up in energy or lyrical quality. In that track, it was like every sex brag was raunchier than the last. You wanted to know how they were going to up the ante every time they traded off. But this, the sex brags are lukewarm at best. There's nowhere near the same over-the-top punchlines or intense lyrical imagery that really sticks with you. In fact, for how much Drake is the only one with real personality on this track, even he doesn't pull off the macho dude stick that well. Like, just listen to how the verse starts. Okay, alright, that's fine, okay. What is this? This doesn't sound like the tone of a confident dude showing off how cool he is. It sounds like a dude who just got rejected and he's trying to take it well without crying in front of her. Hey baby girl, how about you let a real man take you out? <laughs> well, that's an awful intro, so not interested. Okay, alright, that's fine, okay. And he repeats this part twice in the verse. Okay, alright, that's fine, okay, okay. I know this is supposed to be the certified lover boy Drake, but I'm sorry, every time I hear that initial part, it sounds like the dejected response Johnny Bravo would have after the latest chick he tried to hit on Porter Milkshake down his pants. Okay, alright, that's fine, okay, okay. So when it does get to the next line, I feel too sexy to accept requests. It comes off more like someone who's got sour grapes about the situation and he's trying to save face by acting like he's the one who's actually so above the girl he was trying to get the attention of. And that would be cool if that were the theme, like, oh, being so sexy and feeling yourself despite what anyone thinks, but no, it's not going for that. It's supposed to be about how unquestionably cool these guys are. Oh, you like the boy? Well, tell me what you like about him. But like I said, there's no definitively memorable lines in his verse that strike a chord and help him really stake his claim to this apparent uber sexiness, unless making callback references to low-income housing turns you I'm a fuck of friends and send them back to Metro Housing. And even then, we've heard a million songs already where Drake talks about banging hood rats and then sending them back to the project when he's done with them. Like, come on, at least throw in some wordplay or over-the-top metaphor that'd make it worth listening to for the million and first time. It's like I always say, if you're a rapper who's a complete douchebag, at least be funny enough that I don't think about it. But virtually all of his verses, is just run-of-the-mill stuff he's already said before. I mean, I guess hearing Drake talk about having a diamond-encrusted grill was kind of different. Diamond popped out on a swallow 60,000. 
That's all that makes me think is. You know, when you put it that way, putting $60,000 worth of rocks in your mouth comes off like a really bad idea. I mean, the music video definitely has some fun parts to it, like Drake embodying different types of archetypically sexy dudes, or, or the part where he goes full dad bod when he's trying to holler at chicks on the beach. There's also some pretty funny animated bits, especially the part where Future starts flexing so much the women around him keep getting pregnant, and he has this genuine look of, oh shit, this, this is a bit of a problem. Although, Future doesn't exactly strike as the kind of guy who's trying to stick around. Too sexy for those alimony payments, eh? But even then, other parts of it feel just so half-assed. Just look at this low-effort boy band tribute scene with the choreography they're barely attempting to do. And then the camera just randomly zooms in on this dude who so clearly has the look of, Oh, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. I, uh, the director didn't tell me what to do with my hands. Oh yeah, and then the song's interrupted by a one-note skit that'll maybe get a chuckle out of you before going on like 20 seconds way longer than it needed to, all for a joke about pretentious perfume commercials that literally everyone made like three decades ago. Sorry if I'm being especially pissy right now, but God damn it, that intro really set things up like this is gonna be a fun, goofy time, but, but the rappers clearly don't have their hearts in this. Like, come on, you started with the right said Fred sample. Go all the way with it already. When I hear a song sampling, I'm too sexy, God damn it, that song should be overflowing with testosteronal manly energy. I should feel like jamming out to it on my headphones while strutting down a busy sidewalk in nothing but a tuxedo speedo and looking damn unbothered while I do it. But no, each line just drains the fun out of things further and further, as the rappers all but tell how little effort they're putting into it. Young niggas always ready to murk some call them smokers. Young nigga have emotion, you make sure the car gets I mean, I assume this line ends with something that rhymes with smokers, but if you know any song by Future, yeah, the lyrics that rhyme ain't exactly a guarantee. I mean, I guess you could give Young Thug props for having a bit of a unique delivery when he starts off. But it's clear even he was running out of ideas for anything interesting to say. Hey, you already used that line? Oh, whatever. Too sexy to double check, I guess. The song doesn't even bring the chorus back at the end. Like, they can't even pretend that the hook Future did was some rousing anthem that needed to come back to round out the song. Nope, it just kind of stops and peters out musically. It doesn't even end on a good closing line. Yeah, he, he ends by rhyming prosthetic with tooth fairy. Yeah, I know, they were too sexy to fucking try to rhyme. Whatever, this gets a zero out of five. It just so blatantly squanders a chance to have fun with the concept, and instead just goes, whoops, sorry guys, you thought this was gonna be a fun, quotable novelty song that would stick out from the rest, but no false alarm, just more generic strip club playlist filler, nothing to see here. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like, because it helps, comment if you have something to say, because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe button and the bell button afterwards, because the bell is what actually alerts you to new episodes. And if you want to keep up with everything I'm doing, check out my link tree for Twitch streams, merch, movie and album review podcasts, and any other stuff I'm up to. So check all that fun stuff out, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.